Okay, for the first several quick practices, in fact, for lessons three to 11, we're going to practice the routine that they actually introduced in lesson two. So in lesson two, we go through a partner routine and it's a part of the activity. So you'll introduce this in that activity and then it becomes a regular quick practice every day. So the slides prior to these tell kind of the, the general flow of what's supposed to happen, student leader one, student leader two, etc. I would think that two student leaders would probably be enough um, because having four students up there might be too many and then kids start goofing around. But you choose how you wanna do that. Just know that in the book it starts with four student leaders. Okay, so I'm gonna do it based on two and then you can change it as you would like. So I'm gonna actually move all of these pages back and a student leader number one would say, um, which row, or excuse me, which column in the multiplication chart um, is six and 16? And they're gonna ask that question, so kids are gonna start to think, they're looking at the multiplication chart, and then the student leader would immediately say, um, which factor uh, has six and 16 as multiples? Think about it, class, and what students should say is they should say two. Two has multiples of six and 16. Student leader two then would come over and they would grab the um, little blue strip and they would put it on the two columns, right? So I was writing up here, but student leaders, if you're using the Google slide deck, could also just drag and drop the card. So we know that six and 16 are multiples of two and I can show it six and 16. Then this student leader would say, um, boys and girls, which row on the multiplication chart has six and 27? Which factor has six and 27 as multiples? Think about it. So kids that are struggling are looking at the multiplication chart, we're trying to make a connection there, and they would say class, and the whole class would say three the student leader or the second student leader would drag and drop that red transparency strip or if you're using your class multiplication chart they would affix the red um, transparency strip that comes with your kits so the student leader then would mark three right here now the student leader can go in any direction they want so technically the student leader could have started with six and 27 they could have started with six and 16 but now they're going to go based on what they know so if the top of this column is two the bottom is what? Two. If the left of this row is three, then the right is what? Three. So now you can ask those questions or students, can, leaders can just go ahead and um, label both of them as they go. So when we decided it was two as the factor, they'd put two here, they'd put two here. When three was the factor, they put it on both sides. And now the student leader would say, boys and girls, three times what number gives me 27? Think about it. Class, and they would say nine this student leader would come over and drag it to the nines column. Now I'm gonna put the nine at the bottom, and the student leader would say, boys and girls, two times what gives me 16? Think about it. Class, and the class would say eight. The student leader would drag and drop this to eight. Boys and girls, eight times nine equals how many? Think about it. Class, and they would say 72. Now, if students are not proficient in their facts, that's why they also have the multiplication chart. Boys and girls, let's check our factor puzzle. Six and 16, six and 16, 27, 72, 27, 72. Then you'd go to your next problem. Boys and girls, what column in the multiplication chart can I find 32 and 56? Class, which factor has both 32 and 56 as multiples? Okay, so you can see that I'm gonna go through the exact same routine, right? I asked both questions, which column on the multiplication chart? Which factor has these numbers as their multiples? Which row on the multiplication chart? Which factor has these numbers as multiples? Okay, as soon as we find that, we're gonna um, label it, and then the second student leader is gonna come over and mark it on the multiplication chart. You're gonna continue that for 11 lessons. So every lesson technically has two different uh, slides so you can see in the notes it says lesson 1.8 and you can see that um, there's two lesson 1.8 1.8 1.8 1.9 1.9 okay so there's two different slides per lesson once I get to lesson 12 now I'm working on telling proportion problems so again there are several student leaders here 
um, in which you know one student leader would come up and do a part of the problem, then the second student leader could come up and do part of the problem. Um, I'm gonna leave that up to you if you have that many students involved. Um, I prefer to have as many students respond as possible. So you can do it with one student leader or six. But essentially the student leader is going to give a proportion problem based on the context. So because we want all students to participate, this would be an example of students getting to even turn and talk, tell their neighbor a proportion problem, and maybe the student leader quickly calls on someone. But if we're going to do that turn and talk, we have to make it very quick, like 30 seconds, because we don't want to waste time. We only get five minutes for these quick practices. So the student leader would read context. Erica is mixing cans of blue paint and white paint to get pale blue paint. Give a proportion problem for each factor puzzle and then solve it. Okay, so the first everyone turn and talk and tell your neighbor a proportion problem for this factor puzzle. Everyone would turn and talk. Boys and girls, who has a problem? And the student leader might or a student might call on the student leader might call on a student and the student might say, Erica mixed six cans of white paint and 10 cans of blue paint to get a pale blue paint. How many cans of white paint does she need to get 30 cans, 30 cans of blue paint to get the same blue paint? Now we're gonna switch rows. So the student leader would come up and they would highlight that this is the row we have now. And now we want that same row, but we're going to switch it. So I now need six and 10, and then I need 30. So because I switched those rows, now the student leader would say, turn and tell your neighbor a new proportion problem for factor puzzle number two. Okay, so they're gonna turn and talk, she's gonna call on someone, and someone else is going to say, how many cans of white paint would we need to mix with 30 cans of blue paint to make the same color blue as we would have with six cans of white paint and 10 cans of blue paint? So you can see that the student leader now can circle, you can see that the rows have changed. Next, we're going to flip the columns based on factor puzzle number one. So here's factor puzzle number one. I'm now going to flip that and put the factor or the columns in uh, reverse order. So we're gonna switch those columns. So now I know I'm gonna have 10 and I'm gonna have 30 and then I'm gonna have six. So the student leader is gonna walk through that and then the student leader would say, boys and girls turn and tell your neighbor a proportion problem. Okay, so they're gonna turn and tell and they would say, call on someone and they would say for 10, um, cans of white paint, Erica used six cans of blue paint to make a pale blue paint. If she uses 30 cans of white paint, how many cans of blue paint is she going to need? Okay, so once we've gone through the, the stories and we've, that's all we're rehearsing, we're rehearsing how the story changes based on what is unknown. Okay, so once we do that, then we can ask students to solve them. Maybe they solve them on their whiteboards. Um, maybe they solve them just using their multiplication chart. Maybe the student leader walks them through, right? So maybe we continue to say, so what is the common um, factor with multiples of 10 and 30, right? And the student leader might say two, right? So I might say two, I could even say 10 here. And then the student leader is going to say, boys and girls, what's, the, what's a factor that has a common multiple of six and 10? And the student leaders would, or the students would say two. Boys and girls, um, if I know two times what equals six, and they would say three. And then I would say, well, if I know that this is three, then I know that this is three, right? And now I can start to solve. So they could go through and solve the entire um, factor puzzle to actually solve that proportion. Um, and or do all three, but we want them to notice the similarities and differences when there are three different factor puzzles with all of the same numbers. So most importantly, they're gonna tell those pr proportion problems, and then they can go through and solve if time allows, and if you feel like that's something they need rehearsal of skills in. Otherwise, they would go to the second one, and now they're going to give the context, and then they're going to solve, um, give a proportion problem for each factor puzzle, and then if time allows, they're going to solve it. Thank <laughs> you.